Hi everyone. <clears throat> you can hear the water behind me. Water is the only thing that I am really afraid of. That's why I've kept the water on and see how I can overcome this fear of mine. My name is Dheeraj Singh. I'm going to be talking about the power of fear. The first thing that comes to mind when you talk about power of fear is I thought is it a topic about the fear of power which is more prevalent in today's time. But then on introspection I thought the power of fear is a very powerful subject by itself. There are two popular dialects in Hindi that come to my mind which are relevant in this context. Jo dar gaya samjho mar gaya. Living in fear is at best at not living. The other one used in an advertisement uh, slot is called dar ke aage jeet hai. Just ahead of fear is the path to victory. Both are very contradictory statements and both are in the extreme. I don't think fear is either of these. So let's talk about fear what it is actually. Fear is a threat from real or imagined danger to physical, psychological or emotional well-being. It's an anxious feeling caused by our anticipation of some imagined event or experience. That's the technical definition of fear. So what does fear do? It causes the fight or flight response. Do you know that we are born with just two fears? The fear of loud sound and the fear of falling. The fear of falling is good because our forefathers and mon monkeys, I hope they had this fear otherwise they would keep falling down from the branches. There are two kinds of fears, the rational fear or the irrational fears which are called the phobias. On a lighter note, there's something called Venusatra phobia, which is the fear of beautiful woman. How can anyone fear beautiful woman? There are five main categories of fear, which classify the rational side of the fear. The first is the extinction, fear of extinction, which is the fear of annihilation, of ceasing to exist, the fear of death. The second is the fear of mutilation, losing part of your body, having your body's boundaries invaded. The third is the loss of autonomy, the fear of being immobilized, paralyzed, restricted, overwhelmed, entrapped, imprisoned, all of these which are controlled by circumstances beyond our control. The fourth is the fear of separation, which is the fear of abandonment, rejection, loss of connectedness. And the last but not the least is the fear of ego death, which is the fear of humiliation, of shame. Now that we know all these categories of fear, let us know what the famous man Nelson Mandela once said. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but it is he who conquers that fear. Very powerful. And when you conquer anything, what do you do with it? You use your conquest. You use what you conquer. That is your power and the power of fear. We can all use this power of fear to grow and evolve. Life is after all a sum of experiences and the experiences of fear are the most important category in this, in my view. So let us look at 10 ways of how the power of fear is created and how we can use them to grow. I will use and cite many personal examples to illustrate the points better. Many of them are very personal. So I hope you keep it to yourselves. So let us start with uh, the first one. In my school days, I was traveling to Darjeeling for a cricket match with my seniors. I was the youngest one. Suddenly the toy train stopped. We all got down and we thought we'll catch it up. The train started moving fast and I couldn't jump back on the train. I was so afraid. I was scared to death. I started running behind the train. It was out of sight. But I ran probably the fastest I ever did in the middle of the forest. And that helped me to see and catch the train when it was coming back to climb and incline. So that was the fear which kept me safe. Another part related to safety is the security. A few years ago, again by some fortune or misfortune, I lost a large part of my fortune. And uh, 
I actually had the fear of the security of my family. How will I take care of them? That fear led me to come back into the corporate life. So, number one, safety and security. Very important. What fear can keep us? It can give us safety and security. The second is, all of you would have seen what happened in the COVID. We were all fearful of it. So much uncertainty all around. What did you all do? We all worked as a team and prepared ourselves. So fear can make us work in teams and get prepared. One thing that happens when you are afraid, you imagine and create all scenarios in your mind so that you can prepare for it better. Your mind opens up the clogs in your brain. I happen to write six books after something that I got afraid of. So it leads to creativity and imagination and innovation. Fear does that. On a very personal note, not too in the distant past, I had a fight with my dear wife and I had a fear of losing her. It made me introspect and analyze the situation, which led to a deeper and a better relationship going forward. So introspection and analysis, another very powerful outcome of the power of fear. A decade ago, I was trekking in the hills of uh, Himachal and I was listening to my music, watching my mobile. Suddenly, I fell down on a rock. My entire still have the mark here. The flesh came out, mud went in. I went to a government hospital. I got infected. Cut the long story short, after that, I never took a step in the mountain without focusing on what I was doing. So that fear in my mind made me focus and concentrate. The same happens when I go to a board meeting when I'm afraid of some questions getting asked, I concentrate. Or when I have a fear of a deal getting lost, I pull all my concentration power. So focus and concentration is something that, uh, sorry, the power of fear. Early days in my career, I was uh, bored to death in a large multinational. And this fear of actually really stagnating made me switch to a BPO. It was a new fad at that time, business process outsourcing. And within a month, I realized this was not my cup of tea with all the night shifts, etc. So I jumped back again to the mainstream. I used that learning from that BPO to set up a similar BPO outfit for that international company. So bold steps have to be taken when you are fearful. It makes you take risk, be more daring. In my childhood days in school, um, the only time I got slapped by someone, hopefully the last time, was when a few of us boys were walking around and when school boys walk, there are always girls involved. So it led to some of the boys calling their elder brothers, big brutes. One of them came and slapped me. I lived in fear for the next three, four hours. But I took my elder boys, you know, the elder boys, and went to his house and made him beg me for forgiveness. But I tell you, the adrenaline rush that I had for these few hours, there's nothing to beat that. So fear can lead to a lot of fun, excitement. It can be a confidence booster, which it did to me for sure. In the company that I'm associated with currently, we have more than two lakhs people. And they all have to come on time, well turned out. Because if they don't, they have the fear of losing their jobs. The clients might ask them to leave, which leads to discipline. Is the fear of losing a job that creates that discipline, which is so important. Why only the people out there? Let's look at the business in totality. We cannibalize some of our own traditional businesses so that we can adopt more tech-enabled businesses because we fear that our mainstream business can be disrupted by such tech-enabled businesses later on. So it leads to discipline and adaptability. So very important in your business life also. One of my colleagues in an earlier company, um, in some rush of stupidity, he touched a female staff uh, who had come from overseas inappropriately. 
I came to know about it. I confronted him. And that fear of humiliation, shame, and even a bit of retribution, he confessed everything and never in his life he did anything of that sort again. So that fear leads to morals and integrity, that framework which keeps the society going also. Last, um, again from a business perspective, in my very first job I was posted in Chennai in an automobile plant and we had to convert an assembly line into just-in-time uh, assembly to increase the productivity. The laborers were totally against it. But when their incentives were linked to this productivity, they quickly fell in line. So it is a fear of that losing money that can improve the productivity and the efficiency. Talking about which, I remember in my IIT days, all of us hated the summers. Summers was when you failed in a particular course and you had to again stay back in the horrible summers of Mumbai and uh, retake that particular course, which made us all make sure, I mean at least me, that you work very efficiently and uh, pass those courses. Um, so it can that fear of something, that staying back out there in the summers can lead to better efficiency. So now that we have discussed all the potential growth potential areas from an experience of fear, let us now look at 10 ways of managing this growth potential better. I will call it as proactive fear management. Firstly, make sure that the fear is in the mind and body, but it does not come out in your eyes or in your voice. The world should not know that you are fearful. Internally use fear as a tool. Get all the benefits of fear from created in your mind and your body. But let your inner self, your soul, your consciousness control this fear. Create this fear like a package of special steroids inside of you. And use its power as long as you don't get powerless. So, mind and body is where it starts and mind and body is what helps prepare. So, let us go through those particular areas. First is learning from fear. Any experiences that has caused fear, you learn from it, next time you are better prepared. The second which is very close to my heart and my mind is meditation. It helps you accept fear. It helps temper your reactions, your emotions how you control them when you are faced with fear. The third is simulation modeling. Mind is a great simulator. It can keep simulating all scenarios which help you get better prepared when you face that particular fearful situation. The fourth is about correlating mapping pattern recognition. You can put a particular uh, fear in one category and see the pattern in another category. You can relate to that. The fifth is contextualize. Imagine the degree of the impact of the sphere. Will it really cause something that you will remember at the time of your death? So you can contextualize that way. Then comes Ikigai um, in Japanese, which is having a purpose in life, makes you get up. Once you have that, all these different pockets of fear that keep coming in your path, you can overcome that because you have a Ikigai, a purpose. The next one is very important, it's about keeping the balance. Do not ignore the fear and do not freeze in front of fear. You got to keep that balance. Now these are the parts of the mind that help you get better prepared. Come to the body now. You have to keep yourself healthy. Your immune system should be strong enough to face fear and fight fear and to use the power of fear. And in order to keep your mind and your body well, what do you need to do? You need to sleep well. A very often ignored part in our lives currently. You need to sleep well to be able to again gain from all of this that we are talking. And your mind, your body, your sleep, all of that, there is one part that is again gaining in popularity is your spiritual strength and faith. Keep that alive, part of our normal life. Fear him. Just like Mary Curie had said, nothing in life 
is to be feared it is only to be understood thank you all been a pleasure talking to you